Hey what up folks, welcome to the Film Focus page, it's me Mr P again and I'm going to be giving you my newest review of Pitch Perfect 3 starring Anna Kendrick and Rebel Wilson. Now, in this film, which is the third film in the franchise, we see the Bellas who, after graduating from college, they've now stepped out into the world of work and they're now called in to do a reunion to start performing at a concert for some United States officers. Now, for me, when I first saw the first Pitch Perfect film, I thought this was a breath of fresh air. You know, this was something that was original. You know, this was something that was harking back to, you know, the old John Hughes films of the 80s. I thought that the comedy was on point. I thought that the camaraderie between the characters was on point. I thought that the riff-offs between the different groups were impeccable. And I thought they were absolutely superb. And this was a breath of fresh air. And it was a thoroughly enjoyable film. You know, you didn't have to be a, a girl or a man to enjoy the film. You just enjoyed the film. And I certainly did. Uh, you know, and it's one that I took my niece to see. And she loved it as much as I did. And we got it on DVD. When I did the sequel, the sequel was that rare gem. It was that rare gem of, you know, where the second film was better than the first. Because, you know, when you do a sequel, you need to remember that you need to improve. You need to learn from whatever mistakes you made in the first film so you can better yourself in this film. And they certainly did that. The comedy was just as funny. The camaraderie was just as better. The riff-offs were even more superb than the first time round. And even the commentators in the film, they were just as funny. And I thought, you know, the, the Bellas have graduated college and they're going off into the world of work. That would have been a perfect place to like end the film. But they didn't. And they did a third film. And here we are. So here's my verdict. After seeing films where many threequels don't do that well, with the exception of, you know, Captain America Civil War, with the exception of Logan, Born Ultimatum, this film, unfortunately, doesn't fit in that category. I found the film to be quite a letdown. They didn't bring anything original to this film at all. I found that, you know, it was just a rehash. You know, you could see that the film was just running out of steam very, very quickly. It was just a rehash of some of the old previous films. You know, the comedy seemed a bit forcing and seemed a bit desperate at times. Rebel Wilson, who was very, very funny and charismatic in the first two films, she came across as being quite desperate in this film. You know, and don't get me wrong, it's not a bad film. It's not a bad film. There are some good moments in this film, but there are some jokes that miss their mark. And there are some comedic liners that do hit their mark. I mean, I remember there was one that um, Anna Kendrick did, which was a, a sly um, dig at the writers of the film. She said, I don't know why we participate in these riff-offs because we never win anything. And it's true. If you look at the two previous films, they lost all the riff-offs, even though they performed impeccably. And for me, you know, it, it's a shame that it had to end here. There could have been a better film. This is the shortest out of all the Pitch Perfect films. This film is 93 minutes. You know, some of the previous characters from the, um, the previous films aren't in this film. John Lithgow, he makes an appearance in this film. And there's a ridiculous subplot in this film where he plays Rebel Wilson's father. And he puts on an appalling Australian accent. And I thought that that film, and I thought, you know what? That was just desperation. You know, they could have done something better with this film. And on the whole, you know... It really wasn't that great. I didn't enjoy it. I found it to be quite a letdown. And even John Banks and Elizabeth Higgins, who play the commentators in this film, they were superbly funny. They were incredibly funny in the first two films. This film, they aren't. You know, they still got the chemistry, but the jokes do seem a little bit tedious, a little bit forced, and a little bit tired. And on the whole, you know, for me, I felt a bit deflated, because, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a huge Pitch Perfect fan. And, you know, this film just wasn't that great. It ended on a bum note. And, um, you know, even though there's a touching scene where, you know, in, like, post-credit sequences, they start to show, you know, like, excerpts and um, clips from, like, um, backstage footage of, like, the two previous Pitch Perfect films, this film just wasn't that great. You know, and it ended on a bum note. So, with that being said, I'm going to give this film a 5 out of 10, and I'm only going to give it a 5 because the riff-offs in this film were okay. The one as good as the first two, but I'm still going to give it a 5 out of 10. Is it one to watch? If you've got some time to spare, why not? Is it one for the DVD collection? You know what? The first two are far superior and this one won't add anything to it. So I'll say no. So that's my review Pitch Perfect. Let me know what you think. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, Facebook. 
and please feel free to subscribe to this channel and I shall see you on the next film review. Stay blessed.